Welcome, everybody, to RimWorld. Yesterday, we had a lot of progress with things, just weird little things, really, like, you know, the irrigation sprinklers, the workroom with the extra cabinets, and what the hell have I done there? Um, steel bridge. Okay, I don't know how I've done that. Anyway, that doesn't matter too much. What matters is that yesterday, after we finished everything, there were a lot of comments giving me a heads up with regards to the irrigation sprinklers. Now, we've only built, bear in mind here, we've only built four of them. So, I thought before I'd start here, I'd let them run through one cycle of irrigation. So, it's only a few hours since we left off yesterday. Um, just to see, really, how much of an impact they'd have on our water supply. So, honestly, these things are absolutely insane. Not only have they churned up, bear in mind our water tower's maximum, uh, maximum capacity, from what I remember, is 8,000. So, not only has it used half of the water capacity for four sprinklers then let's say maybe use like uh probably use like 900 to a thousand uh whatever they're called liters that's it liters of water a day but look at the soil fertility with irrigation sprinklers pr plus the fertile soil that we've now added the 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 bio solids 470 percent fertility uh, which is absolutely fucking insane. It means that this rice is going to basically pop up overnight now. It means that if we, we... We should probably also go into research for things like Devil Strand too. Because that is going to make them a lot more viable than they normally are. You know, we could actually potentially get everybody a full set of armor and gear with this crazy shit we've got going on. The downside though, of course, is that we can't sustain that. Two days and everybody's going to die of thirst. So we need to probably turn off the sprinklers for the time being. But uh, can I even turn them off? Am I going to have to have a valve? Ah, oh, shit, we're going to have to have a valve. And the way it works apparently as well, although I haven't seen it quite yet, obviously because they've only just uh, they've only just activated. But apparently the fertility will drop over time, which makes a lot of sense. Um, we'll keep a close eye on that. So what we've got to do then, first and foremost, is add a valve to the sprinklers so that we don't have them using all of our water. But we need to go into the industrial drilling, the um, additional water storage, that type of thing, because otherwise they're just not viable right now. And then eventually we can go into things like advanced agriculture and see what we can actually grow with our fancy water fields here. And then don't forget, we've got additional stuff that can also contribute to this. Things like the, uh, where are they? Was it like power or misc? Um... One of the columns we've got somewhere, wherever the hell it is, is the sun column. So that will provide the both the heat and the light necessary to grow them. We could have a bunch of indoor greenhouses with irrigation systems, with the, with the fertilizers and those columns allowing us to... There it is, the sun column. They give both light and heat over a quite a distant area too. That would be quite cool. I, I think that we, we could get ourselves a very efficient, massive sort of growing zone with that. And it also gives me a good idea for future mods as well. We've never really done like a crazy raider drug farm or anything like that. So that'd be kind of fun. I already kind of have a good idea for next series. And honestly, this alone has been the inspiration there. Anyway, today we've obviously tried and got to get everybody armed. That's the main job for today. See if we can get Delta to actually be able to craft her craft her stuff. I also want to do a little bit more for the power too. There's a reason I've got everything turned off right now and there's, there's still not enough power in the grid to be able to run everything we've got going on. So we need a few more batteries, a few more wind turbines or solar generators, however we want to go about that. We do have an exotic goods trader though, which is quite nice to see. Uh, Delta, let's see what they've got. How much silver have we got? 1,038. Not fantastic, but I'm sure we've got some stuff we can trade away here as well and see if they're uh, interested in maybe some of our mutant legs, for example. All right. Um. Okay, so... They have, uh, I'm looking at the animals here, they've really got nothing we want there. Um, they sell some components, honestly, buying just basic components probably wouldn't hurt, because we still can't craft them, don't forget. Uh, we've got plastic, the uranium crystals sell for a good chunk of cash, don't they? 79 apiece, I know it's obviously going to take quite a while, but we, we should refine them and see if the, uh, it's got to be the case that the uranium that you get for refining them is worth more than 40 silver per thing, right? Um, right, this is what, this is what we're really here for, ultra tech weapons. That is one thing we never got to see during the first series when I wanted to test out all of the stuff added by the Empire DLC, the Royalty DLC. Unlocks the Link Monosword, Link Plasma Sword, Link Zeus Hammer, Monosword, Plasma Sword, Zeus Hammer. For the Cybernetic Orc Army, I couldn't think of anything more perfect. We've got Psy Focus Equipment or Specialized Limbs. Oh, man. But for both combat and labor. So that unlocks the drill arm, the field hand, the power claws. The drill arms themselves have proven to be incredibly useful. Bear in mind, they have no impact on uh, manipulation, just movement. Which is already fantastic. Um, what's brainwash? Raise the memory, removes... Oh, removes traits. Oh, I see. So if, say, for example... Say, for example, you were setting up recording the episode. Uh, and say, for example, that uh, trait changed. Delta has gained the trait blank. But they didn't actually tell you what, uh, what, what she'd gained there. And then you checked on Delta and it turned out she's randomly decided that she's a fucking cannibal. 
<laughs> the brainwasher might be quite useful for that. For example, uh, I was going to bring that up in a minute, but I thought it was the perfect time to mention the fact that, yeah, as I was setting up Delta, did randomly become a cannibal, which, of course, we're not going to do anything. It doesn't it doesn't affect us. You know, we, we don't have to give a human meat or whatever. What's Zoom? Um, artificial eye with Barjow, nerve link, intersignal pre-processor, self-repair module, wide spectrum centers, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's quite cool. I'd rather craft our own limbs than... I'd rather save up and buy the specialized limbs and, and these rather than just buy the one-off sort of hit of, uh, bionics and prosthetics. Synthread Affix 6. What is that? Oh, it's Connect 4. Got it. Uh, we've got Janko character sheet. Oh, the Mega Screen Television, of course, is the fastest recreation game in RimWorld. Um, 2,000, though. Can we really afford that for such such luxury when we still need plenty of other things? Um, I'm not sure I can afford it. I'm not sure I can justify it yet. I'd love to get these up. Oh, Neural Trainer Crafting. Oh, well, shit. Well, there we go. We don't need to worry about buying components or anything when we could just buy that. Problem solved. That's incredible. Um, let's see if we can afford these Ultra Tech weapons by selling some stuff off, though. We could, again, sell the Radiax and be able to buy that immediately. I'm still not convinced the Radiacs are worth keeping around, but we're going to give them a little bit more time. I'm not just going to throw them away because they haven't immediately been useful here. Um, man, we definitely cannot afford... We can sell the Psychic Silence. It seems we're barely using Psychic abilities anyway. But even that will not give us like a quarter of what we need for these weapons. You know what? Let's just go with the Crafting Trainer. Boom. Okay. Well, that was the goal of today was to train Delta up to the level where she would be able to... Uh, she'd be able to craft components. If we do this, she should... Have more than actually she's already got enough to go, but this certainly couldn't hurt anyway. 13? She can make advanced components now, right? Um oh we haven't researched yet. Of course we need advanced fabrication first. Oh, we can make five we can make components in bolt now. That's actually incredible. Cool. Alright then. Um Do you want to make some weapons just as a temporary thing, or should we wait for this research to finish and focus all on that instead? How much steel have we got is the real question. Um six hundred and ninety six, and then we've got four components. Let's go ahead and make components in bolt. Let's make fifteen. Do X times, uh, where X is 15, and then on pause when we've only got, say, 7 left. Do you think that's, a, that's an alright idea? Um, wait. Oh, you fool. Right, on pause when we've only got 7 left. I think that works. And then I'll go ahead and manually unpause the bill so she'll finish that one off. And she thinks we've got 9 in storage. Yeah, up here, it clearly says we've only got 4. Um, huh. I don't know why that is. There might be some line around on the floor. Oh, that we haven't hauled yet, right? Because that checks the whole map. Got it. Okay. Right, the other one's down here. So why don't we also make a few more mortar shells and deal with the last of the mechanoids. We could send Sharamus down again. The only thing I'm worried about is this also Inferno can. Because if it hits them and lights them on fire, they're just going to fly around in front of the turrets and get annihilated. Um, we could go for a distraction, like one person on this side, one person on that one. As they shoot over there, Sharamus can come around with a sword or we have Upsa. A two-man unit would be enough to deal with this. We send like Rows and Upsa to deal with it rather than waste a load of resources on on shells. I actually think this might work. Oh god. Baby baby loathing. Oh, it's a baby feralist hunting a little loathing. Okay. Um that's another thing that we should really do is take out that massive feralisk up here. I might go do that first, otherwise it would just spawn loads of little feralisk. And the little feralists don't their size isn't taken into account here. They'll just attack whatever the hell they feel like because they're feralisks, essentially. Um Okay, let's squad everyone up then. Let's squad everybody up. Uh, what's it? Are you okay? Can you can you afford to be squatted up right now? Yeah, you're probably fine. Let's go deal with these Feralisks and then we'll go and deal with the Mechanoids so that we're not, you know, we don't, we'd have to worry about that minor thing uh, constantly in the background that we that we kind of have to concern ourselves. We're limiting ourselves to certain areas or potentially being attacked by bloody spiders constantly. They, they are at no risk of doing any real damage. It's just the inconvenience really of them constantly attacking us. Let's send, um... Let's send you guys to go and deal with them. So everyone else, I'm going to undraft. Let them go about their business. Let's take these guys go deal with the, the Feralisk up here. That should be more than enough. And there's obviously another baby one there, but I'm not going to hunt them all down right now. Actually, there's quite a few. Uh, maybe it will be worth it then. How many are we looking at? Feralisk, Feralisk, Feralisk. That, okay. Oh, there's actually quite a lot. Let's go and set them to be hunted then. Because again, those ones are not really a threat. The big one, though, is definitely a threat. So we're going... Actually, you know what? I said I wasn't going to draft anyone. I am just in case they go on Feralisk Revenge or something like that. There's also been a lot of comments as well, especially in yesterday's episode, saying train the children into becoming, like, medics. It probably couldn't hurt for a little bit, I guess. Uh, apparently, it's really expensive to train them in medicine because you need medicine to actually teach them, which makes a lot of sense. Um, I was kind of hoping that that would be a Red Revenge so that the other one would come and attack us as well or we're in a defensive position, but we can, we can sort of spread out along here. 
depending on how expensive it is to train them, I will consider that. Uh, but if it, again, if it's going to take a shitload of medicine, I'm not going to right now because we don't really have that much to spare, unfortunately. If it's manufactured. We've only got two medicine. We've got 142. If we could use herbal for it, absolutely fine. You guys probably shouldn't rush them down. Halatos, I swear to God, please use your gun. You're very annoying with that. Okay, good luck, good luck. Oh, it's getting very close. Um, okay, I was expecting it, to be honest with you, to go for Sharamus, given that he was the closest. That's why I was sending him like that. Okay, is that enough? Oh, look at that. The madman's done it. Samwise Gamgee. Good work, team. Get away from him, you blighter. Um, Paralysis. Oh, look, see, this is exactly why we need to deal with them. That's such a pain in the ass. Go on, take him down. Delta Nops have required target. You don't stand a chance. The rest of them shouldn't be too much of a problem from now. Okay, that's another issue dealt with. So we'll go ahead and focus on the last of this hive later. So it turns out the mechanoid turrets can hit you despite the fact that you are in uh, a safe zone. Oh, the rain's washed it away now, but I wanted to demonstrate it. Uh, basically, I had Upsa stood there, and the, this turret here, for whatever reason, can still hit him. I'm not entirely sure why. I'm not sure if it can thread these diagonals or something, but he got shot. Which is why he's now at home getting himself tended up to. So instead, I've decided we'll just we'll just hit him with some mortars. I'm not fucking around with these crazy like these these mechanoid turrets just seem to be able to blast through walls. So instead, we're just going to send out to go and shell him to death. I didn't want to do it because we're wasting steel, but realistically, we will in theory be able to make a profit as long as we don't waste too many shells on this. We just got to hit one of them, set the rest of them off. Just hitting the mini slugger turret honestly might be enough to blow them all up. And then we can dismantle the walls. Okay, or do that. That's not really what I was after, but I guess it's fine. Yep, that'll do it. Okay. Um, is there anything else there that will get us killed? You can you can go back about your regular day now if you don't mind. I think that's it, isn't it? Okay. Well, let's get everything else taken apart. See if we've actually made that was 150 steel to make those 10 shells. Granted, we didn't use them all. We got through what like five there. Uh, four shells it took to be able to blow that up. It's my fact that one well play shell would have definitely. Set off a chain reaction. We got kind of unlucky there. So let's go ahead and take all this shit apart. Also, we can now unrestrict them entirely. So that's dealt with all of, again, the the kind of issues on the map. The feralists, the mechanoids. Kind of tidied that up quite nicely. So I'll go ahead and... No, no, We want to say animals in the animal area besides our ground runners who are free to go. And I've also been told about a thousand times in the comment section in Discord and everywhere to take a look at things like our policies as well. Um, so this will allow us to set up particular, as you can see here, traits policies, military policy, social policy, tax policy for our settlements. So we've got things like minimized taxation, gives us obviously lower base tax, but more happiness and less unrest. Heavy taxation by comparison, less happiness, but 25% bonus to taxes. I don't think either of those are worth implementing, are they? We've got social policy, one people united, 50% happiness gain, one military level, minus 10% base tax. They're here to print me money. So anything that affects taxation, I'm not interested in, but I also don't want to have to micromanage their unhappiness or anything like that. 15% um, extra base tax, 50% unrest gain. What does that mean? Because if we've got no unrest in the colony, I don't know what that means, whether whether we there is a set amount of unrest per day. We get like zero right now. I have no idea. Um, society under the command of a royal family is unified in its traditions. $25 modifier to tithe taxes. Minus 10 cent cost to build a new settlement. Minus 500 silver cost to build a settlement. Oh, that's quite cool. Um, right, okay, interesting. Uh, we've got company union. Uh, minus $10 to work cost. Plus one max worker. Plus two over max worker. That sounds like my type of thing. Plus 10% tax. Minus 25 modifier for tithes. Plus 15 worker cost. Works are more expensive, but you get more taxes. So maximizing profit with the smallest amount of workers. Um, that company union just seems good no matter what. I might enact company union. Why not? We'll be enacted in five days. That gives us some extra workers. Military policy. Um, combat uh, loyalty. 25% on rest gain. Minus 25% loyalty lost. 10% um, tax gain. That's what we're after. Yeah, give me that. <laughs> fuck, the, fuck the military forces. I'm all about I'm all about taxes here. Yeah, go for that one. Then we got faction traits. The new pioneers. Minus 10% settlement cost. Mercenaries. 10%, 25% combat efficiency. Oh, so, so apparently the bonus, by the way, to the military power and things, you can call them in as an ally. So that might be worth considering. But for this one, this one's pure profit. So combat efficiency, work cost, I'm not really interested in. Expert craftsman, 25% protection to a parallel weapons. We've got agricultural... I assume we want miners guild, don't we? 20% uh, bonus to mining. Get that in. Uh, and we can pick as many of those as we want. Can we go like... Oh, I was going to say, hopefully we can go like triple in that one. That's a shame. Um... Okay, so settlement cost sounds pretty good. So we've got 
quarrying policy. Uh, and I see maybe we can change these later on. Maybe the first one is for them to adjust it. It costs gold. For the time being, I'm more than happy to put down a shitload of mining settlements and just have them print money for us for the time being. Um, is there anything else that's actually useful? So we've got the settlement. Um, I mean, agriculture, 15% production of food, 20% to animals. None of these really help out too much. 50 research progress per day, but working cost. I'm not interested in anything else, to be honest with you. I think that's all right. We just need a tax law then. And honestly, neither of these take my fancy. I'm kind of happy with the status quo with that. We could build buildings that obviously affect happiness, it affects unrest, but we need more silver to do that. So let's just leave it. All right, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty all right with that. Oh my God. A group of imperials from the Broken Empire. The, what, the Broken Empire. The Empire. Jo oh God, okay. Um, oh good, power armor raiders. That's what we needed. Uh, they've got power armor. They have charge weaponry, charge shotguns, charge lances, laser pistols, uh... Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I got an anti-material rifle. Yeah, that's fine. That's a-okay. Not a, not a problem at all. We're gonna die. We're gonna die here. Good God. Uh, oh, it's a siege as well, isn't it? Uh, hit them with mortars. Get everybody on mortars. Hit, hit them with everything we've got. Hard and fast. What's it? Get on the mortar. Uh, you got on this one. Delta, Delta, Delta. Get on this one. Kill them all. Aim for the people. Thin them out. Aim for the ones with the power armor. Because this is, this is potentially a life or death situation right now. So I'm going to say hold fire on Delta until Watts is ready to fire. And then we're going to launch two volleys simultaneously. Okay. Uh, hold fire on that one, Chief. Thank you. And then let's go ahead and unhold. Set a force target. Just go for whoever's wearing the power armor. Oh my god. They're even dropping like really, really powerful mortars. Um, you go for him. And you go for... I mean, anybody stood near the stood near the explosives is probably an alright target. The old, that would be good. Fire there. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. Where's the other one? Uh, excuse me. Where's the other? Where's the other mortar shell? They both fired. Uh, did they hit? <laughs> Loathing is going on a fire starting spree. I hate you. You can light fire outside while the rain's on. That's 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 absolutely fine by me. Okay, here we go. Second volley. Boom and boom. All right, this time don't miss if you don't mind. Brilliant. Okay. Great, that mountain really deserved it. Well, this is phenomenal. This is this is phenomenally bad. If we hit their shells, they will blow up, won't they? So what we'll do then, change of change of plan. Uh, how many more shells have we got? Barely any. We've got one left. Just aim just aim for their shells. Aim right there. Uh, and who else have we got? What's it as well? This is going to be very much thread of the needle. But if we can hit that, they have nothing to use against us. And we'll force the, the assault instead. Come on. Go now. Go now. Now's a really good time. Okay. Boom. There we are. That's what we were after right there. Good shit. Good shit. Okay. Um, so we knocked one down. This guy is bleeding out in six hours. So I just steal what they can and leave. Steal what they can and leave? What? A smooth octopus. Now is not the fucking time for that. They stole their own shit and now they're fleeing. Incredible. Okay. I'm not going to use the second killbox. Oh, are you sit now is not the time, you prick. Okay, Delta, get in here. What's it get in here as well? Okay, so now it's like 6v6. Oh, no, the other ones are fleeing. That one's down. With power armor and a laser weapon. Uh, We can't strip him. Why can't we can strip him. Get out there. Strip. <laughs> oh, recon helmets, boys. Nice work. Um, Should we turn this into a prison? Seeing as our people are not getting damaged. Wow, to say they were the Empire. That was pathetic. Delta, capture Collis. Rose, melee attacker. Don't kill her. I want her alive. She died. Okay, she's still dead. Now, I couldn't have but notice that we've got Imperials flying around the floor here. Strip, strip, strip. Get, get me some more armor. Get out there. Go, run, run, run. How long until she dies? 11 hours. Not only that, we could capture her too. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Boom. Look at that. Okay, that could not have gone any better. <laughs> that genuinely looks like the perfect Empire raid. They completely fucked up there. I love that the game thought that they were getting stuff from us, despite the fact that they decided to steal what they can and leave. They decided to take back their own stuff and flee. They left us some yayo. That's quite nice. More importantly, charge shotgun. Absolutely fantastic. That couldn't have gone any more perfect. Let's get this stuff hauled as soon as possible. I thought I told you to capture her, if you don't mind. Uh, let's go ahead and get this stuff hauled, then. The first conflict versus the Empire, and it was an absolute embarrassment for those guys.
Holy shit, that was unbelievable. Um, we've got a laser gun as well. More importantly, that means pain and loathing actually have something worth using. Our child soldiers actually finally have weaponry. And I think it's only fair to give Delta and Upsa the recon armor that we picked up there too. That's absolutely incredible. That's so, so good. I, I can't believe how easy that was. It's like mind-blowing how crap the Empire ended up being. They just completely dropped the ball on that one. Holy shit, let's make sure this stuff is hauled back as well. Obviously, I've got it set all to high priority hauling, so they'll get that moved. Uh, she, she should pick some stuff up and carry it home with her on the way back. We're just done eating a meal out there in the rain. Or not. Or, or don't. That's fine. No, it's, it's all right. It's not like we need that stuff. Taking home. Thank you, Boomalope. Thank you for doing a better job than Delta. So what are our new friends like then as potential recruits? Because we're definitely not going to... Uh, oh, God, terrible. We're definitely not going to be ransoming them back out. This guy's got an acidifier. To be honest, he's not worth keeping alive. Pyromaniac. Wimp. Chemical interest. Be capable of firefighting. Terrible skills. Kill him. Take him down. How long is he guilty for? Expires in 14 hours. Execute him. And then we've got Euf Euf Euphrina. Euphrina Palamas. Uh... Jesus, really? Chemical interest. Okay, Steadfast Night Out. Those are good. She's got six medical. Oh, God, her stats are bad. She's not worth keeping around either, as far as I'm concerned. Neither of these guys are worth capturing. Their armor served more than they ever were. We could keep them to ransom them, to be fair. Um. All right, keep them around. Uh, let's go reduce resistance to build up some social skills. For our, for our people, obviously. For our wardens. Um... No, we want to go prisoners, but not medical. Uh, and I, I need to put an actual prison now as well, then, don't we? Um, let's go ahead. And I did say that we kind of attach it around here, but we'll still keep it as a separate building. Uh, why don't we do something like like this? So that in the event of a prison break, it's not so... It's not going to be such a pain in the ass to get over there. We could also feed them with a nutrient di dispenser, given that they're going to be kind of out of the way over here. We'll do something like that. Oh, nice. Okay, Bulgur's trade. you got to bear in mind now that Delta's wearing this helmet as well. She loses a little bit of her trading effectiveness but the question is do we want to i suppose we could put it on a we could put the uh the helmet on a mechanized armor rack and we just have them equip it during a raid that might be a bad idea she's still got 12 percent negotiation rather than what was it like 20 percent before um so it's only going to save us a small amount of silver to be honest i want to sell things to these guys so that we can get enough money to work on a settlement a little bit more what does shock goats do they do anything useful um Produce decent amounts of milk. Okay, that's not particularly relevant, I will admit. You guys want to buy some... Oh, look at this corn we've got. And bear in mind with the sprinklers, when eventually we get around to putting the... I, I've, I've turned off the sprinklers for the time being. But eventually we're going to have more... We've got 5,400 rice, for Christ's sake. Let's let's sell half of our food stuff to them. So let's go ahead and sell, uh, say, 1,000 of those. And then we'll sell them 2,700 lots of rice. That's 3,000 we're getting there. Um, of, of food that we're never going to use, to be honest with you. In exchange, we could trade it for some components. That probably wouldn't go amiss. Uh, let's go and buy 10 components. Sell them the light leather, the plain leather, the camel hide, the chitin, and the chinchilla fur. Probably wouldn't hurt to buy a bit more medicine. I'm not super into the idea. I'll sell the yayo as well, seeing as we've got people with chemical interest kicking around now. Um, green tea? Not too interested. Uh, you got any of those? Oh, man, it's just bulk goods trading. They sell absolutely fucking everything, don't they? They've got a hauling bot, actually for a decent price as well. I could be persuaded to buy another horn bot. Trade a bunch of food for a robot that's going to save us a load of time and effort. Bear in mind, they, they, they move a lot faster than our animals or our people can. That's probably not a terrible plan. Let's stick with that. Um, and then I'll go ahead and I'll sell off all the extra crap, like the damaged uh, the damaged clothes. I'll sell that to Cook of Alliance now. We, we don't really... I can't be bothered to max it to that extent. That's kind of crazy. To be honest, as far as I'm concerned, we're not going to use all of that rice. And we've got a massive rice harvest that's, A, just coming over here, but more importantly, just about to come in with all those sprinklers as well. Why don't we sell them uh, just enough rice to be able to uh, take all of their money? So, there, that's fine by me. Here, take, take the excess. That's fine by me. Get all the silver. Just hanging on to the silver in the future is way more useful. And this rice is going to take no time at all to grow. 70, 73. See that? It just jumped from 73 to 78 as we were looking at it. 470% growth rate. We don't need to. We don't need to worry about food. We we can always sell more food than we have. Before, more food than we obviously we can't. Obviously we can't sell more food than we have. I meant more food than we, more food than we need there. But we've still got plenty. We've still got thousands of corn. We've still got a shitload of potatoes. We've got a, a ridiculous amount of minnow as well. Uh, 122 minnow there. Honestly, our meals are good. And then actually, uh, should they not unpause soon? Hang on, let me just take a look at this. Um, they should be unpaused. What is Upsa doing if not? 
Oh, bed rest, right. Uh, let's drop that down then for a little bit. Get some more meals cooked if you don't mind. Yeah, it's going to go back to butchering now. Robots actually aren't as bad as they used to be, given that, um, given that you can repair them. Back before you could, they were very expensive and obviously very fragile, which affected their usefulness. I would generally kind of restrict them to certain areas. Oh, fuck. What happened to our... We're out of water, but I've got it turned off. Do I not? I definitely have it turned off. Um... How, how have we run out then? What? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I have no idea how we've run out there. Given that the, Unless the valve's not working. I mean, valve closed. Okay. Uh, maybe the pump's not working very fast. Something to do with the wind pump perhaps not spinning as fast as it could. Either way, we, look, this is a good sign that we need to change our water. Even with the valve turned off, apparently we still don't have enough for the entire base. Oh, the rice harvest is done. You see that? That was at 70. We went from 30 to 70, 30 to 78. In that small amount of time, it's already all finished. That's insane. And we've got our taxes in as well. Ah, oh, cool. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and claim on that one. So bills and then resolve bill. The 500 silver coming in there. There you go. Having a nice family with our... <laughs> having a nice party, sorry, with our Rimworld family consisting of Little Loathing and Giant Sharamus, the horrifying orc. Incredible. So I want to actually start working when, when we uh, get some of our advanced components working. We want to get the... Space of furniture building up next. I want to make our people as uh, sort of as comfortable as possible. It's just basically easy mood. Everyone's in a good mood anyway. We might as well ensure the little things, the little things we don't have to worry about, and like lavish meals, say things like uh, eco the, the the ergonomic beds there. Oh Christ, okay. The ergonomic beds, just getting those down. Hey, it's just free mood, and we don't have to manually keep up with it like we do with the lavish meals or anything like that. Manhunt's pack of sand lions. You are in the wrong neighborhood, my friend. Um, what is that? Fermented rotting mound. Uh. Huh. Thank you for thank you for adding me to the game. All right. Um. What the hell is that thing? That's a fucking dragon. Wow. So we've got quite a few of these things to deal with next. Oh, it's nice to see the difficulty has at least come back to the place it should be. That's something. Um. Everybody draft up. Then we might as well give pain and loathing their own little defensive positions too, seeing as they are more than capable of combat now. You guys can take the bottom wall. Oh, that's such a good idea. Having the child soldiers right on the vanguard. Nothing like shooting a lion with a laser gun to uh, to really cement your place as a child soldier in the colony. This one's hitting them with high end charge weaponry. Man, these guys are actually quite powerful, aren't they? Shit. Okay. Um. In that case, let's get you up here because you've got shotguns. So you've probably got quite a low range. What's the laser gun right? Actually, it's got pretty decent range. Shit. This could be a problem. Um. They've covered a lot of ground very fast. Holy fuck, they're so powerful. Good god. Okay, um, please kill them fast. That one's gonna break through. Sharon, let's get your laser sword ready. Oh no, you're fine? Okay, I think we're probably okay. Man, they got a little bit closer to comfort there though, didn't they? Holy shit. We need a few more turrets. Oh, we need a second line of defense, because that's this is all well and good, but it puts our guys in a little bit of danger. That was a little bit uh that was a little bit risky. But hey, plenty of meat again, so I can't really complain. Good work, team. I like the fact that now the raids have started to kick up again. God knows what mod it was we ended up removing there, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely given us a lot more things to contend with. You know, raid from the Empire is no small feat, followed up by that pretty soon after. That's quite good. Prison's coming along fairly nicely. It's taking quite a while because I just hit the end of our wood, and to be honest, I'm not too bothered about building the prison out of wood because if that catches fire, hey, you know what? That's, that's not, not that I'm going to lose too much sleep over there. We have had, however, a strange asteroid, and I haven't seen this event for a very, very long time. So this is the Sky Eel asteroid. It drops a load of these uh, Arcturian Sky Eels. From what I recall, mining them spawns in new Sky Eels or something like that. But this is Sky Steel. That, that's what this material is. And it's, it's an incredibly powerful version of steel that has like a high beauty bonus and things. Um, it basically bridges the gap between regular steel and uh, plasteel. But of course, it's incredibly rare. So we should probably save it for like art or something along those lines. As I recall, it, it's not much better than regular steel. Um... We should find a way to extract usable minerals from it. I'm pretty sure you just mine it rather than do anything special. We'll wait and see. How's the prison coming along then? Um, yeah, we are out of out of wood by a long way. What I've done then is I've put uh, sort of four beds. You kind of roughly see the outline there, but we've got four beds and then an end table in the center. I'll go ahead and cancel some of these bed designations because that was kind of overkill anyway. We've obviously only got four prisoners. Um, and then I put a dresser over there, or sorry, a wardrobe over there and a dresser over there to... Give them a maximum um, comfort bonus. Let me know different to sleeping in a bedroom. Obviously, the downside to it is it's barracks rather than anything else. This is where the nutrient paste dispenser is going to go, which is why I started them mining this out too. It is something like that with a little bit of a door of an entrance to top it up there as well. Oh, good work, Pork. Nice one. Uh, and then the manager should obviously go ahead and, and designate some more. Good God, look at all this food that we've got. Should go and designate some more wood as and when we need that. I've done a little bit of expansion of the power grid as well. So we've got a few more batteries in there, which the Tetra Slug, I'm hoping here, will be able to reach the three on the end. Um, 
What? <laughs> uh, no, but so apparently it can't charge those. It looks like it's only charging these four right now. That's all right. It doesn't matter too much. That explains, I guess, also why those four are charging these two aren't. So, all right, that's fine. Uh, but we've got a few more solar panels down there as well. So that should hopefully, for the time being, deal with all of our power issues. Um, they are all connected. I just wanted to double check they were all connected up there. So we could probably go ahead and turn everything back on that I've disabled then. So we, well, we might as well only have one, one of those on for now, seeing as... Uh, Seeing as we've only really got the bills set up necessary, we don't, we don't have that much stuff to smelt down at the end of the day. We go ahead and turn on another research table, and then that should just be in time for when winter comes back around. We can turn all of their uh, turn all their heaters back on. Oh, why do you not have a vent into there? You're going to be very cold if we're not careful. The prison is basically done right now. I'm, I'm min-maxing things a lot more than I normally would, so I've even got a heater outside of the prison with an overwall vent, so that even if they smash the vent, they still have to smash the wall down as well to get to the heater. I'm being a lot more careful about the prison than I normally would be. I don't know why, really. It doesn't really warrant it, of course, but we've got our nutrient paste dispenser there. That means we can get our hospital back and kick the other ones out. We need to do a hospital expansion, too, when we get a bit more silver into things. But to finish off the episode, it turns out Delta is Pergonant again, so we're going to have Pain, Loathing, and then some other ones. So if anyone has any suggestions for an additional... Oh, shit, we do have a Sky still. Nice. Uh, if anyone's got any suggestions for further names for the continued fear dynasty might be the best way to phrase it given the amount of them they're going to friggin be at this stage please let me know so we've actually done a pretty decent job today i think with the uh, the additional power grid has helped out quite a lot the prison obviously is a nice addition we defeated the empire in one-on-one -on -one conflict you can't even deny that it did happen uh, even though <clears throat> it was a little bit easier than i think the game intended but hey you know what? i'm pretty happy to leave that as it is tomorrow then i want to crack out we've got a little, tiny little bit last on uh, these, these specialized firearms, tiny little bit more research there to do. I want to finish work on, or at least, uh, make it so that the sprinklers are sustainable for tomorrow. So let's go for, what are we looking for here? Um, wells? Drills? Uh, I think it's like industrial wells, deep wells, is that it? Yeah, there we are. Industrial scale pumping and deep wells. To be honest, we could also go for hot tubs, smart toilets, and power showers. Full-blown luxury. Who needs Nutramine to save our lives or hydroponics so that we constantly have food when you can have luxury Japanese smart toilets? Thank you all for watching. We'll leave that one there for today. Then what a what a what a silly episode. We beat the Empire though, so that's a pretty massive gain for us. And I've dealt the, with the uh, of course we did the settlement stuff as well, which I can't really forget the the settlement policies, which should be enacted by the time we get around to things tomorrow. Thank you to our insane top tier level patrons for making the series possible in the first place. This month more than ever. A thank you goes out to Slippy Nips, Harry McGowan, Blue the Lazy Archer, Silkworm, William Green, Pringles, Anthony Gawley, DKO, Iguana Squad, Ninja Tree V, Jackson Woodman, Director Fritz, Bacon Kitten, Necrofill, and Grim Wolf, Cyric Through and Through, and everyone else at the Insane Tier Levels on Patreon for their support in making the channel possible in the first place. Thank you guys for this month of all months, like I said. And a thank you as well goes out to Ryan Hooper, Meow Volcano, Kamar Ishmael, Ben Taylor, Better Valerian, Vanilla Gorilla, Sam Kears, Donald, Scorched S. Anchor, Layla, Pantherpearl, Brittany Lee, Blood for the Blood God, and everyone else at Patreon as well. I'm going to be like, updating the Patreon list after today because we've got to the end of that one. So bear in mind, we are using an opt-in system now. So if you guys want a shout-out and you are over at Patreon, of course, send me a message on Discord. Send me a message on Patreon. Send me a message wherever, and I'll make sure that is ready for you guys tomorrow. See you then.